Hello, how are you doing? Dr. Dave here, the RV dummy with another episode back at you. It's going to be, can I afford this RV? And I believe, I'm pretty sure this is episode number five of can I afford this RV. I'm throwing them all in a playlist. So if you like kind of the format and what we're doing here, they're gonna be all in one, or they already are all in one playlist. This is the show where you write into me, you give me the RV of your dreams, the one you want to buy. Maybe it's not the one of your dreams, but the one you want to buy along with your financial information. It needs to be, I need to know everything. I keep it confidential like I'm gonna be doing today. And I will get back to you with a decision whether you can afford the RV or not. This is not legally or financially binding. I'm not an attorney and I'm not a financial advisor or planner, but I know enough, I've had enough life experience with personal finance and buying things and I've made all the mistakes. I, I'm pretty sure I can guide you very, very nicely to your answer. Now, the answer might not always be the answer you want to hear, but I give you an honest answer from my heart. And by the way, um, I'm sorry if I look a little crazy weird today. I don't know how I look, but sweaty. Um, I just got back from a little run in the park. It's beautiful here today in Salt Lake and um, I love running. I've been a, uh, just to let you know, a little side story, I've been a, um, a 40 plus year runner. I'm, I've never been fast, I just keep doing it and doing it. I'm very slow actually, but I've been doing this for well over 40 years. I'm 63 years old now and it's just something that's gotten me through a lot of crazy situations and kept me healthy and I just love running. So just a little plug for, for running or even getting out and walking, moving your body. It's especially as an RVer, you know, a lot of times we're just behind the wheel all day and, or a good part of the day. And then we get into camp and sometimes we just don't get enough exercise. So I can't remember if I've done a, a um, an episode on how to exercise in your, in your rig, uh, you know, when you're camping. But if I haven't done that yet, I'm going to do it because I get, get some great, great, great ideas to stay in really good shape while you're RVing. And just two more things before we get into today's show. Um, I've got something new. So, so if whenever somebody, if, if you can afford, if the answer is yes, you can afford the RV, I've got a little singing bowl and I'm going to go ding, 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 ding. If the answer is yes, if the answer is no, I'm not sure what we'll do. Maybe we'll play some solemn music or something. And just this thing just keeps going and going. Have you ever used a singing bowl? These things, by the way, totally different episode, but we'll, these things are great, great, great for meditation. Um, and one more real quick thing before we get into today's question. I know I'm, I've got a lot for you today. I'm just so excited and I appreciate you. You, I appreciate you. I really do. Um, I've got a little newsletter. It's called Dave Discovers. It comes out every other Friday. So about twice a month, every two weeks, it comes out by email. It's totally free. It's written by me. And I just give some really good, I think some good life tips. And it's not necessarily about RV at all, RVing, but it is about life and just some things that I've learned and I'm still learning over many years. If you want to join, like I said, it's totally free. I hope this comes out okay. I hope this is not backwards, but in case it is, it, you go to join davidmaddow.com and I apologize if YouTube flips things around. I just can't remember if they do or not. But if you can read it, join.davidmaddow.com and if you can't read it, the David Maddow is D-A-V-I-D-M-A-D-O-W. I'll try to put it in the show notes as well. Let's get into today's show real because I, I know I bored you and taken a lot of your time, taking like four minutes of your time already. So let's get right into this. Um, so Somebody writes in and I will not give her name. Let's make up a name. Let's make up a name. Her name is, what's a good name? Amy. Amy from Baltimore, Maryland writes in and she said, I've, now that's, it's not the right name and it's not the right city. Um, but here we go. She wanted me to keep everything totally confidential. I've got a, I found, I found a 2018 road trick. SRT with 6,500 miles on it that is very nice. They are asking 79,995, 79, close to 80,000 for it. The low NADA is a bit over 72,000. I'm pretty excited to find this almost new as I was looking at a Pleasureway 2002, 2012 XL that was 76,000. Should I try to get this one for about 72,000? Well, first of all, before I read further, um, so Amy, um, the 
purpose of this show is not to really judge if, you get, if you're getting a good deal or not, and I don't know, I don't have enough information. As a matter of fact, I, I did look up your vehicle and it looks really sweet. And what I'm gonna do right now is see if I could put up a little picture of the, your proposed rig. It looks really sweet. This thing is beautiful and I really hope you can get it. But I can't tell you whether it's a good deal or not. However, um, I do believe that if somebody's asking a certain price, they're asking $79,995, I believe that you can make a really fair offer after you've done your research, make a fair offer that's lower than what they're asking. And I think, um, especially if you can come in with cash, there, uh, there's a pretty good chance that there, people are gonna deal, at least a little bit for sure. It's still only, you know, as we're recording this, it's still in the winter, so they probably wanna sell it. So I, I, I try to make a deal with them. But more importantly, let's get into your financial situation. So you wanna buy something that, let's say it's $80,000, okay? Anything you can get off of that is, is great and congratulations. Um, but here's your financial situation. We have zero debt, good going, that's beautiful. A nice home and three cars will be getting rid of an older pickup truck. Additionally, we have investments of $1.222 million. $1.222 million so we can pay cash for this vehicle, but we would have to pay capital gains on the money we use. Too bad, that's okay. Don't worry about the capital gains, it's fine. If we finance some of it, they will discount the price $3,000, and I've heard you can write off the interest as a second home. No, please. We both have good teacher retirement from our state and are taking the minimum required distribution in our, our, on, our, our, uh, oh, on our IRAs that comes to about $75,000 a year, which is more than adequate for us to live on. So just to recap, um, Amy and her husband, they're, they're drawing 75,000 from retirement plans, et cetera, and that's what they're living on, and that's more than adequate. So the 1.222 million will not, won't even be touched, um, except if they cash out some of it to buy this for cash. Our home is valued at $450,000, and they don't owe a dime to anybody, which is beautiful. So the net worth roughly in the, um, roughly in the $1.7 million range of net worth. Amy, congratulations, you've done a phenomenal job. I love hearing stories like this. The answer is, the answer is, you, you can afford this. Pay cash. Do not take the stupid financing thing. There's a reason, there's a reason they're giving you some kind of incentive to finance because they're, they're making money on their end somehow. Don't do it, don't do it. Pay cash. You can, I'm sure then you'd be able to negotiate down to at least that, um, to at least that, that, that um, amount. They, they said they would, they would discount the price $3,000 where they're already telling you they could discount the, the amount. Through. So if you come in with a cash offer, you can certainly get it for $3,000 off. I'd be sure of that. Um, don't finance anything. It's ridiculous. You, you're debt free. Why would you ever want to get back into debt? That, that's the last thing you want to do. Um, and I would not worry about the capital gains because yeah, if your money has never been taxed, if the if the um, gains on your money have never been taxed, yeah, you, you, eventually you got to pay the piper. So that's that's no problem. We all have to pay tax, um, but that's that's not a problem. You've got more than enough money. You're living off of. Um, your your pension and your your um, your retirement plans. You're doing phenomenal. Just um, after you take that cash out to buy that RV, leave that additional one point something million in there. Let it multiply, multiply, multiply over the years, and you are doing fantastic. Thanks so much for writing in, Amy. Congratulations. If you if you want an answer to your question, please write in to me. Please be succinct. I've gotten some messages from people and, and they, they, they say so much and it's so wordy and I can't make heads or tails out of it. So you just gotta be very careful not to say too much, but give me all your financial information and I'll try my best to get you on a future episode of Can I Afford This RV? But until next time, first of all, remember, before I leave you, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. If you have not subscribed, give me a like if you like the show. All, they're all not can I afford this RV? I do different types of RV shows, but we have a series called Can I Afford This RV? This is number five in the series. We will do more pending your requests. Send in information. And by the way, if you have any other basic questions about anything, especially RVs, write into me. I will try my best 
to get them on the air on the RV Dummy channel. I really appreciate you guys. I'm Dr. Dave. Yep, I am the RV Dummy, and I'll see you next time.